Okay, full disclosure. I was not able to make tracker work on my computer, or I wasn't patient enough to get it to work. In order to measure all the kinematics of this grasshopper in Dustin's Smarter Everyday video. However, I was able to take measurements of the position of the grasshopper's eye as a function of time with PowerPoint and then use Excel to get all these measurements and do the calculations to get velocity and acceleration as a function of time. And so here you see the position of the eye and the time in ten thousandths of a second that I took from the lower left of the video. And I did it for several screenshots. And so you see the position of the eye at several different times and the associated time in ten thousandths of a second. Then all I need to do is get the scaling factor and I remember that the tibia is 15 millimeters. So I have two tibias here in length. Then I straighten it out to make the measurements easier and cut down the length of the tibia by a factor of two. So this is half a tibia. And then I cut it down by another factor of five. And so here I have a meter stick that measures the distance in one tenth of a tibia or even with greater precision. Then in Excel, I enter the distance in tibias of the eye as a function of the time. I convert the tibia to distance by simply multiplying by the length of the tibia, which is 0 0.015 meters. So now I have distance and time, and I can get speed simply by taking the difference in distance and dividing it by the difference in time. And this gives me the speed in meters per second, which means that the maximum speed was on the order of five or six meters per second, which is reasonably consistent with what I think a grasshopper speed could be. And so here we've graphed the distance in meters as a function of time in seconds. I'm sorry for having left off the labels and the units here. And essentially we know the speed is the slope of this line, which I've calculated here. And we put this in the next graph. Now this is a strange thing and I don't understand. It seems as though the speed has decreased, which you can see the slope is somewhat less here. Now this could mean a number of things. I made a mistake. It could also mean that this is the moment the grasshopper left the ground and there might have been some surface tension holding his foot. And here you can see I have time in seconds and speed in meters per second, which I just brought down from above here. And here I calculate acceleration in meters per second squared. How do we do that? We just take the difference in speed and divide by the change in time. And yes, the acceleration of the grasshopper is the slope of the speed, how fast the speed is changing in time. And so I'm getting on the order of 600 meters per second squared. Okay, that's 60 gravities. That's a lot of acceleration. And again, it's a little bit funky over here at the very end. So hopefully from this video, you can see how I took Dustin's videos and was able to measure the position of the eye as a function of time and turn that into meters and then enter these values into Excel to get a distance versus time graph, a speed versus time graph, which is essentially the slope of the distance versus time graph and then an acceleration versus time graph, which is a time derivative of speed or the slope of the speed versus time graph.